A boat can go at 8 meters per second in still water. A river flows at 2 meters per second. At what angle to the shore should the boat enter the river so as to reach a point directly across on the opposite shore? We will consider two views of the situation. One view is from a point S that's fixed on the shore. From the point of view of S, a point R in the river and moving with the river has a velocity of 2 meters per second. Let's say that direction is to the right. We can imagine our fixed axes um, centered at the point S. So the velocity of R as seen from S, well we could call it the absolute velocity, VR. It's, it's relative to the shore but we don't write VRS. Um, if it's relative to the fixed background we just call it VR, we just call it the absolute velocity, is 2i. It has no j component. So we just set up the i-axis to point in the direction of the river, the positive i-axis. We will make the positive j-axis then in a direction in which the boat appears to move as seen from the shore. Let's call the velocity of the boat as seen from the shore or the absolute velocity of the boat vb. Since vector vb is entirely in the positive j direction, we can write vb as the speed of the boat, that is the magnitude of vector vb, just remove the arrow, times unit vector plus j. Now let's consider the view from point r, so we can imagine moving axes centered at the point r. We need to see um, what b's motion is relative to r. Well, we can get a rough idea. From the shore, the boat appears to move directly across the river. But point R, of course, is moving down the river with speed 2 meters per second. So when the boat is here, point R might be, say, here. When the boat is at this position, point R has moved on a bit. And when the, po the boat is about to uh, reach the opposite shore, point R has moved on a bit further. So the distance of point R to the boat is increasing. So from the point of view of R, we can see the, um, the, the distance of the boat upstream from R keeps on increasing. Okay, So the, the trajectory of B will not be directly across the river, but will appear to be going up the river. Okay, by upstream I mean, you know, it's, um, it's no longer directly across but in a direction at some angle um, measured, you know, um, anti-clockwise from this direction here. Now since we're, we are dealing with constant velocities in this problem, um, the path of the boat as seen from R will actually be a straight line. If we were not dealing with constant velocities, then the path of the boat might be something like this, some curved path. But that's not the situation when we deal with constant velocities. Um, if the velocities are constant, then the relative velocity vector will also be constant. Okay, so we are going to be interested in the velocity of the boat as seen from point R. And we know from our formula that that's given by VB minus VR. Um, since VB is constant, okay, we want uh, th these velocities to be constant, and since VR is constant, then VB minus VR is also constant. So VBR, the velocity of the boat as seen um, from point R will be a constant vector. So that means the boat will move at constant speed in a straight line as seen from point R. Now we are told that uh, the boat moves in such a way that if the water appears to be still the speed of the boat is 8 meters per second. Now, from the point of view of R, the point moving with the water, the water is still. The water appears to be still. So the boat is moving with a speed of 8. So that's what we mean by a boat can go. Okay, so from the point of view of an object moving in the river, with the river, the speed of the boat is 8 meters per second. So we are assuming that the boat is going at that speed of 8 meters per second. 
because it can go at that speed but of course it, it could be going at seven meters per second um, but you know the implicit in the question is that the boat is going at a speed of eight meters per second as seen from a point moving with the water so we have the magnitude of vector VBR the magnitude of it VBR without the arrow is the speed of the boat as seen by the point R let's get vector VBR the direction of um, that will include the direction of the velocity of the boat as seen from R so that will enable us to get this angle here which I can call theta okay so VBR is vector VB well we can write that as VB times J this vector here minus vector VR which is 2i well, we normally write the i component first, so we write VBR as minus 2i plus VBJ. Then we use the fact that the magnitude of the vector is 8. Um, so let's get the magnitude of vector VBR. So we just use Pythagoras. Well, yeah, we can square it later. 2 squared is 4, and then we have VB squared, and this must equal 8. So from this we can calculate VB, square both sides. Okay, so we get VB equals root 60. Um, so now we have vector VBR fully specified. I can write it down. It's, it's minus 2i plus root 60j. Uh, to two decimal places, VB is 7.75 meters per second. So, as you can see, vector VBR has an I component. Okay, it's not, VBR is not a vector pointing entirely in the J direction. So, from the point of view of the river, point moving in the river, the boat appears to be going upstream. So, if this is a point in the water, where the boat entered the water. Okay, so this is a point that's in the water, so it's moving with a speed two meters per second to the right. Then the boat is not heading towards a point that's in the water directly across from this point. This point in the water is also moving with speed two meters per second. It's not heading towards that point. It's heading towards a point that's further upstream. So, even though from the shore the boat appears to be moving in a straight line directly across the river, uh, the boat has to enter the river at some angle theta which is greater than 90 degrees. If it's going to go from, head from this moving point towards this moving point here in the river. We can get the angle theta that the boat um, must enter the river from the shore by just looking at vector VBR. So here I have another picture of it and I'm showing the magnitudes of the two components. Since theta is measured anti-clockwise from the positive i or x-axis to the vector, the tan of this angle theta is actually given by the j component divided by the i component. Okay, so that's going to give us some negative value now, on this calculator, if you get the inverse tan of 7.75 divided by minus 2, you'll get minus 75 degrees, okay? Um, of course, we want a positive angle theta. It's measured anti-clockwise, not clockwise. Actually, you can get that angle theta by just adding 180 onto this angle. The angle of roughly minus 75 degrees is measured clockwise to this line if we extend the vector down here. So to get theta, you can see that we just, um, you know, if we just add what we had on to 180. Of course, we don't have to worry about signs if we get this angle in here. Um, I can call this angle A. Then using magnitudes, tan A is opposite over hypotenuse, 7.75 divided by 2. So this is a positive quantity. A will come out to be the acute angle, which indeed it is. So we could use either of these two angles to specify the direction.
Here is another method for finding angle A. We show the three vectors VB, VR and VBR. Now since VBR is VB minus VR, it's the difference of these two vectors. We just join the heads of vectors VB and VR. The head of vector VBR is at the head of vector VB. Okay, and I've explained all this before. If you add vector VR onto vector VBR, the VRs will cancel and you will get vector VB by the triangle law. But anyway, it's evident what directions these vectors must be pointing in. We know the magnitudes of VR and VB, and we also actually know this angle here. In this case, it's actually 90 degrees because she wants to go directly across the river. In the next video, um, we will see cases where she's going at some other angle rather than 90 degrees. So you can see that without getting vector VBR, we can get uh, this angle. As before, we see that this angle is 75.53 degrees.